Hello. May the 17th is the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, and this year the theme is Freedom of Expression. In at least 106 countries around the world, events are being held to draw attention to those being attacked by actions or words or laws who simply want the freedom to be an authentic human being, or to love the person that they were born to love. In at least 77 countries, same-sex relationships are illegal, at times involving life imprisonment. In seven countries, same-sex acts are punishable by death. As a survivor of homophobic bullying myself, and as an individual that was born onto our beautiful planet as a gay man, I find these statistics heartbreaking, abhorrent and unacceptable. Earlier this week, it was my pleasure to lead the Archbishop of Canterbury, the principal leader of the Church of England, and the symbolic head of the Worldwide Anglican Communion in a panel discussion in which young people, some of them proudly LGBT, openly shared their views and experiences of homophobic bullying. On the same day, the Church of England issued guidance for schools, stating that senior leaders need to be committed to ensuring that they build a school culture and community where teachers and pupils feel confident and supported in challenging homophobic bullying. I must confess it was a day I had not expected to live to see, nor did I expect to play a part in it. However, over the past four years, since starting my own anti-LGBTQI anti-bullying project, project Inclusion for All, it's been my privilege to speak and visit at Church of England schools and also schools with many Muslim students and students of other faith groups who are undertaking inspirational work for LGBT History Month, for Idaho, for Anti-Bullying Week, as well as looking at role models of LGBT people such as Harvey Milk and Paralympian Claire Harvey. They've raised specific campaigns to raise awareness of LGBT bullying and prejudice, and indeed the occasions when religious beliefs are sometimes used to justify prejudice against people such as myself. Many of the young people I've met in faith schools have told me that their faith teaches them to be respectful, loving and kind to all human beings and that their belief supports them in taking a stand on LGBTQI bullying. I take great hope in this. When I was a child, my parents respected me enough to leave the decision as to whether or not to be religious up to me. I made no such conscious choice to be gay, and I rejoice in that, for this is who I am. Freedom of expression should be a fundamental human right. However, rights come with responsibility, and enjoying our freedom of expression we must always strive to be mindful of the potential damage our own personal, political or theological beliefs may have upon our fellow human beings. When I was a child, I internalised many negative messages about my own identity, from some of my own family, my peers, my teachers, the media, from laws in the UK such as Section 28, from some politicians and yes, from some people of faith, including some highly influential faith leaders. The effect of this was that I came to detest, to cut, and nearly to kill myself. I thank the Archbishop of Canterbury for taking such a proactive approach to preventing homophobia, and I know a lot of young people in our schools will benefit hugely from this. It's important to note, however, that despite this great progress, the Church of England, for the time being at least, will not be changing its teaching on gay relationships. Now, I need school assemblies teaching children that racism is wrong. If during one of these assemblies I stated that black people were not of equal value, but they should not be bullied, how authentic would this message really be in undoing the potential for damaged lives gathered in that room? If individuals, organisations, laws or faith leaders around the world continue to present a sense of shame around other human beings, then young people will continue to live their lives in shame. I know from experience that there is and will continue to be some fantastic work undertaken in some UK faith schools to combat bullying related to identity, driven by passionate young people who express the belief that their faith is about love, kindness and respect. My sincere hope is that faith leaders will take the time to study this work in order to celebrate it and disseminate it and to shout loudly about the win-win situation that taking a proactive approach to preventing all forms of bullying can bring, and that includes homophobic, biphobic, and the bullying of non-gender binary individuals. These young people, I believe, represent a potentially kinder, more hopeful future we could all have, where we stand together as uniquely different but equally valued human beings 
to face the future challenges life on Earth might bring. Freedom of expression is a wonderful thing, but today I ask that we remember that when we express our prejudice or dislike of others, this has the potential to hurt and destroy other human beings. Being treated as less than equal, whether by a parent, a teacher, a law, or a person of faith, hurts. It just hurts.